और क्या हाल है Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will solve find the pivot integer. Although it's easy, and also yeah, it's easy, but we will see all the variations from very brute to very optimal. So it says that we are given a positive integer n, okay, and there's a pivot integer x for us, which we have to find because you will see we have to return the pivot integer x. Now, how to return? What to return? It says the sum of all the elements between one to x, okay, one to x, which means one, two, three, so on, so both up till x. Okay, inclusively, which means both one and x are included. It should be equal to the sum of all the elements between x to n. Okay, okay. So x plus x plus one plus n, so on and so forth. Again, x plus one is next element, and then up till n. That should be equal. That should be equal. Now we have to re return the pivot integer x. If no such integer x exists, then I please return a minus one. That's the request by the question. Now and it is guaranteed that there will be at most one pivot integer. Either it can be one or no one. That's it. So they have guaranteed it. Which in an interview you will have to ask your interviewer. And again, there can be a chance that there can be multiple. Then he will say you, okay, I don't know. Can you prove if there will be one or more? So then you will have to go and tell, okay, I can return the first one, whichever you get, or maybe you can just prove there will there will be. There will be multiple ones. Then uh, you will have to just convince your interviewer on how that fact will go about. Now, for example, uh, for example, for this n equal to eight, so you will be given n. You have to find your x, which is the pivot. You can simply say that okay, I need up till the answer is six. So far we don't know the answer is six, which means one plus two up till uh, plus six. Then what we will do? Six plus seven plus eight, which which means x to eight. Then this sum, which means if I do a one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, so this sum should be equal to this sum, ideally. And that we can see also that it is true that we have this sum, which is equal to our original sum, which is I mean like one to x. So if that is true, then I can simply return that specific number x at which point it is landing onto. Now, now uh, the task for us is that. Arjun, how can we find it? Again, the constraints for us are pretty low. Oh, n is one thousand, maybe in the interview, because they are not going to you. But the very again in the contest, you can see that n square will easily work. And uh, in an interview, you have no constraints, but you can still see that maybe, maybe not. Ah, uh, we can simply try one thing. Why can't I try for all the possibilities of x? Right? I know I can. I have some x which is variable. I can try for all the possibilities of x, which means I have one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight, which means my n was eight. That was the question for me. Now I am saying I don't know what the x is. I'll try for all the possibilities of x. What if my x is one? What if my x is two? What if my x is three? What if my x is four? Let's say what if my x is four? If my x is four, then I will compute one plus two plus three plus four, and then I'll compute four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight. If these two are same, oh, this x equal to four is my answer. So, okay, I'll go on to every of those n, one, two, three, up till n, up till n. I'll go on to every of them, and then at that specific x, I'll compute what is the left sum, what is the right sum. If this left sum and right sum are equal, voila, bro, great, you have found your pivot. So, exact same stuff that I will try for all the possibilities of pivot, which means I have n possibilities, and at every possibility, I have to get the left sum. I have to get the right sum, and that's my main task. So I'll do exact same stuff. That I'll go on to all the possibilities of pivot, which is i for for me. I'll get the left sum. I'll get the right sum. Right sum is okay from one to i, and my right sum is i to n. So again, both inclusive. So I'll get my left sum, which is from one to i. I'll get my right sum, which is i to n. And if these two left sum are right sum are equal, then this i is actually my pivot. And that I can simply return. So you can simply see it's O of n, and here also I have O of n. So ultimately, it's O of n square algorithm, which will for sure work for this question. But interviewer will say for sure. Can you please optimize it? Now, to think of even optimization, what we can think of here? What's happening? Let's let's see and come back. So what we saw is that okay, we have to get some pivot in which this sum and this sum should be equal, right? So again, I am just Kind of calculating left sum and right sum for me. Left sum and right sum needs to be equal, and I'm kind of going in. Okay, I'm left sum. Left sum is keep keeping on building from here. Right sum is keeping on building from here. 
then then add again and i want it should actually come and land onto this specific because i want to include all the values which means one to x and then x to n so i can just simply ignore this also because i can simply say okay if one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is equal to six plus seven plus eight i can simply say that this six i can ignore because both are same so i can simply say one plus two plus three plus four plus five should be equal to seven plus eight so i can simply ignore this right okay so now i'm kind of saying that i'm coming in from the left and i want that sum i'm coming in from the right i want that sum i want these two sums to be equal so at what point should i land on to to get the specific sum oh that's the answer okay so and again to get both the sum again i know that this is a this is a low value it is sorted again as we here sorted we can also infer that maybe we can also apply binary search and stuff maybe we can maybe we cannot but yeah we can think of that part also in in front of the interviewer but yeah we saw that we want to have a left sum but we also know that it, it, it's a small portion we also have right sum like we also want to find right sum and we also have this portion as sorted in the decreasing order if you remembered in the last two pointer video i told you the specific the specific thing about two pointers or to know about two pointers is how to know if i, I can actually apply two pointers is or not is that if you have something sorted late may, late may be increasing decreasing or maybe of this fashion or in other cases when you would never need your edgy values then you will apply your sorting and you apply your two pointers so i i know that i want to find left sum i know i want to find right sum and then i know okay it is sorted and then i just want to compute my left and right sum so i can simply apply two pointers here so what i will do is i will end up having a left sum i will end up having a right sum okay now i have again i want both of them to be equal so i will keep on moving from my left and keep on moving from my right okay okay one and eight okay so right now my left sum is one right right, right sum is eight now two pointers usually one pointer moves it can be any one both of them can move simultaneously but depending upon we have to compare and then move something so i'll compare both remember maksat ni bola our aim was to get this left sum and right sum equal how is it possible if if i keep on moving my right it will keep on increasing right sum is already more so move left bro so i will be at this location i will add to okay this became a 3 again left sum is less than right sum i wanted both of them equal okay bro no worries move on okay add a 3 more it will become a 6 again it is less than my right sum okay bro simply move on okay add now my left sum is more okay now oh my left sum has become more now move the right sum okay i'll simply move my right sum okay move my right sum it has become a 50 okay okay but now bro my left sum is more okay bro simply move on try okay it's a 15 oh bro left sum has become right sum equal bro it's 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 the answer so it's the answer so basically if my left sum is at this point i can simply say bro my answer is left sum plus 1 because you saw that uh, answer would be left sum plus 1 but aryan you missed something there can be a highly possible chance that there would have been different elements in between that left plus 1 and right right pointer let's say it is a left pointer it's a right pointer Oh, but you remembered you have to take all the elements which means x x here uh -huh. so you will compare okay left sum is equals to right sum that's one condition and also your left pointer plus 1 again left pointer was here right pointer was here so your left pointer plus 1 should be equal to right pointer minus 1 only then only then i can say my x or basically left pointer plus 1 is my pivot right so that's how i can simply say i can also solve this by two pointers how the code will simply look like simply look like that firstly i will have a left value and right value which means because i am moving in the left pointer and right pointer and i will have left sum and right sum correspondingly because at left pointer i will have a left value at right pointer i will have a right value because we know it's a sorted one to n and thus i can simply say that i will keep on maintaining my left sum and right sum and now as a simple two pointer approach again uh, you can easily have a base case as it's also given in the question itself uh, that for n equal to 1 because you can simply see okay 1 2 like 1 basically 1 to x and from x to n so if everything is 1 which means i can simply sorry i can simply say that it is 1 equal to 1 right as simple as that so this is for sure true which is 
kind of an edge case which you have to make sure because while you are using while you are using your two pointer approach you will have to write a condition while left is less than right a value because if you remembered i actually skipped the mid which is the common which is occurring in both of them if you remembered it is one plus x so i remove that x so that i don't count that again and again although you can also put a condition why left value is less than equal to right value so as long as it's equal still you can add both of them in both of them you can add it but you have to write a if condition in the while loop for that specific thing uh, i'll say okay handle that separately for this one and equal to one case now um, again as we saw that if my left value is less simply increase the left value and add that in your left sum if your right value is less decrease the right value and add that in your right sum now as soon as your left sum becomes equal to right sum there's a possibility that it's the answer but make sure to also check that left value plus one which means left pointer plus one is equal to the right pointer minus one if that's the case only then i can simply say that my pivot is left value which is left pointer plus one and that's how in o of sorry o of n time i can simply solve it it's a two, it's a two pointers and no space used o of one space used now i'll ask you can you please improvise it now you have reached o of n and you also saw we also saw it's sorted so maybe uh, we can also use binary search on that and yeah there's a high possibility we can use it but 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 if i say about my opinion as soon as i read the problem i'm not even saying that okay i might know something something like that as soon as i read the problem i knew bro it is consecutive numbers one two up till n like or maybe x it's consecutive number sum bro why bro why i cannot use this fact so i saw it's a consecutive number sum maybe from that i can in fact because for sure if it's a consecutive, consecutive number sum i can use maths which is sum of n consecutive numbers which is n into n plus one by two if you have not known it i have specifically taught in maths that there are very less concepts in which you should know about sum of n consecutive positive numbers. Although there is also sum of n squ like square positive numbers, which means one square plus two square. They are different terms, like they are different formulas. But remember the basic AP and the basic GP. That's it. With that, you can simply drive these formulas also. But yeah, that's a basic one which even a fifth, sixth standard person knows. So you should also know that part. So what I found out was that okay, I have to get a condition that one to x and x to n i know i know one thing only i know only n i have to find x i can again according to my formula the formula which i know i know only the formula of one plus two up till some value let's say some values y i'm taking y so the sum of n or let's say okay it's a n so sum of n consecutive numbers n into n plus one by two this is every child knows that part and this and this only this only is the intuition that you saw n consecutive numbers occurring and they are actually being summed up so you know that you have to apply sum of n natural numbers now great that seems good that seems super fine so Arjun, how can i apply in this bro you know that you only know n you know that part and this is the question which you have to find out so in this portion i can simply see that i can apply my sum of x natural numbers which is which is it can become x into x plus one by two but then this how will you find the sum for this are what i'm thinking is i know n so i have to get something in the n terms okay bro but i'll say bro keep it simple like i'll say that increase the sequence backwards and make it up till one what will happen with that is then you will be able to make the sum of n natural numbers so it will become an n into n plus one by two but you cannot arbitrarily add something in the right side add that something both sides so what i'll do okay i'll add something although i needed to add from one to x minus one this is from one to x minus one i have to add on the right side so as to make the entire sequence so that i can make the sequence sum as n into n plus one by two which is sum of n consecutive numbers so i have to add this entire sequence on the left side also so i have to add in the entire sequence one plus two up till x minus one on the left side also it is looking a bit weird if i would have added up till x which is x minus one's next element is x if i would have added up till x then i would have simply said multiplied by two and then here i would have have had a one x remaining extra so i can simply put this x on the side so this will be n into n plus one by two 
and into n plus one, one by two plus x would have been remaining, but the right, but the left part would have been looked much more cleaner for us. Okay, okay. So what I did was I multiplied, like I simply said, okay, add this portion one plus total x on both the sides. Then my this portion can sum up to my n into n plus one by two, and then this x portion remained, and then this became a twice of twice of this portion. Now again, that's a sum of x natural numbers which will be x into x plus 1 by 2 so 2 2 2 is gone i got x into x plus 1 by 2 or here it is n into n plus 1 by 2 plus x simple i'll bring this x on the left side because i know i have to find x so i have to bring entire x on the one side so okay my x is here itself okay great if my x is here itself and then this is my right portion then i can simply say okay if i expand it i can simply see x is cutting x, x is being cut okay x will cut so now my x square is equals to n into n plus 1 by 2 whole square now 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 if you had known a basic basic maths whenever we actually remove square so x is equals to plus minus under root of n into n plus 1 by 2 usually this comes up but we know one thing for fact that x is we had bro from 1 to n if you remembered if you remembered we had from 1 to n we had positive integer n so from 1 to n i had there is the in between cannot be a negative number from the positive numbers in between they cannot be a negative number if they cannot be a negative number for sure okay where is this gone where is this gone okay yeah for sure the negative cannot be there which means only positive can be there now which means my x can only be this positive so x can be this value only with which we got to know that x will be just a single value that's how that's how you can simply mathematically prove to enter into Aryan but but you started the question because of something but after in the end you are telling that it's a proof that it will have only a single value that's the reason there are few things which either you can come up very fast in an interview or you should be knowing prehand so if I would have been at your place, the first intuition for me would have been using maths. But it's an interview, so I have to tell interview. Like I have to tell or discuss with the interviewer. So I just went on with the brute force and stuff. But still, I will have to ask either, either the interviewer. But if the interviewer says, can you prove it? So I will have to prove it. So with this fact, I got to know that, okay, x can be only just one value. But here if you saw that, okay, this can also be a simple float value also. Because see, under root of something let's say which is not a whole square which is under root of 35 it will not be an integer value it will be something as uh, let's say under root of 37 it will be 6 point something but <laughs> my x is a positive integer so i will round off this to an integer 6 so with this fact i can simply know that okay x can be a float value also but i want only the integer ones so for sure if i do an under root of this then i can or cannot get a integer value i can or cannot get an integer value so that's reason i can prove that the answer will be at most one either it can be okay either if i get an integer value from this under root great that's the answer if i cannot then there is no answer possible so i'll do exact same stuff i'll do a square root of this i'll find my x and then i'll just root like i'll just um do it down to a like i just bring it down to a my simple uh integer value lowest like latest integer value if it if it is in a float i'll bring it down to a simple integer value and then i will check back if that integer 6 is actually satisfying which means my 6 square should be equal to my 37 which means whatsoever i have got in as a x its square should be equal to this n into n plus 1 by 2 value if it is equal if it is equal then okay i got an integer answer but if it is not i got no answer so if my x this n into n plus 1 1 by 2 would have been 36 so I would have done a square root and I would have got a 6 and this 6 square would have been equal to 36. Then, okay, my x equal to 6, that's the answer. But if my this n into n plus 1, 1 by 2 would have been 37, still if, if I did a square root, got to a latest integer, like down to a lowest integer, so it would have been 6. But 6 square would not have been equal to my 37. So that would not have been an answer. So I would just simply say, okay, I don't have any pivot, simply return a minus 1. So that's how by simple maths, I know my answer x is equal to square root of n into n plus 1 by 2 so firstly i'll find the sum of n natural numbers n to n plus 1 by 2 then i'll do a simple square root simple square root of my sum which is this specific value this value i have got my x then i'll simply check if x is actually valid or not 
so i'll do a x into x if it is equal to sum then answer is my x else my answer is minus one and that's how in o of one time you can simply solve it although first technique i could have taken binary search all that stuff but yeah that's the most intuitive and the most shortest part for this problem please don't spend much time because i have seen people just for the sake and always remember in an interview you are not required until it's the hard problem you are not required or even told to code up the easy problems although i tell the codes and stuff but in an interview please confirm you with the interviewer that if he wants you to code the basically like if you tell three approaches like if you if in your mind you had three approaches then please don't code the above two only code the most optimal approach that's the score else you will waste your time and time is very important in an interview cool bye bye thank you take care cheers